So today I'm going to be sharing my math picks for four kids who are going into fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade next year. Hi everyone, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Davine and I homeschool four kids who are currently ages 10 to 14. Today's video is a collaboration hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. I will have a playlist in the description box below that will include a bunch of other moms and their math picks for this upcoming school year. This video is part of a series that we are going through a whole bunch of our picks. We started with family subjects, so things like Bible, geography, science, anything anyone's doing together as a family. Today is math, next will be language arts, and the week after that is electives and extras and stuff like that. So if you're interested in stuff like that, don't forget to stick around, click the like button, subscribe if you are interested in this type of content. As a bonus at the end of all the series, I'm going to be adding a video talking about what I'm doing with my seventh and eighth grader next year. They're actually going to be starting some high school credits. So I'm going to talk about how I'm going to make those high school credits and I'm going to be sharing those subjects with you at the end of this series. Okay, so let's get into what I'm using for math with my four kids. Now my two boys, their math abilities are very similar. They're actually only six months apart in age. So even though they're technically in different grades, they are at the same level. So with my boys in this upcoming school year, they are going to continue with teaching textbooks. They are finishing off teaching textbooks math four this year. So they're going to be moving into teaching textbooks math five. Now I do have the CDs that I bought many years ago for my daughter to use. But we're not actually going to be using these. I'm just using this as a prop as I'm talking about Math 5. Our parent partnership program will purchase this for us. And so it will be online. My boys will do it on their tablets. However, I'm always saying when I talk about teaching textbooks, really the only thing that makes this work for us and work for us pretty well is getting the book. So this is the book. It has all the same questions as are on the tablet. And I've found with my boys to decrease frustration having them work out the problems in the book and then entering it onto their tablet to see how they did for that lesson is what works best for us. Otherwise, we have a lot of frustration and I think, I don't know, I think it's too distracting just to do it on the tablet for them. So this strategy has worked for us. I really like teaching textbooks because it does grade my kids' work. I don't have to go back and grade it. If they get below an 80, I go through and I delete the questions that they got wrong and we work on them together. But if they're getting over 80, I just let them keep going on with their math. I do find it very hard to go back and check my kids' work. So it really helps me out if I don't have to go and check their work before they move on to the next lesson. So my next daughter who is going into seventh grade, she is starting pre-algebra. So I did a whole video about some homeschool math online curriculum options, preferably ones that do marker work for this very same reason. And I will link that video in the description box below as well if you want to see the seven, seven math programs I was comparing. But she did choose Think Well Math. So here's a quick look at the math that my daughter chose for pre-algebra. So it's eighth grade math. It's an online course. There are 18 hours of instruction. Um, what she really liked about it is they're very short lessons. And then they have some worksheets to fill out, just usually one page with a few questions. And then they have questions to fill out on the computer to test their knowledge and see what they know. It has exams, quizzes, and exercises. You get this for 12 months from when you sign up. And she will get a certificate of completion and grade report, which we don't really care about. But I do love that it marks it for me, and that is always a big plus. So here's kind of a look at the worksheet, what it looks like. And then I really, really enjoyed how this teacher, this teacher here, explained the concepts when I looked at a lesson. And really, she just likes the short and sweet. Um, I'm not sure if it's spiral or mastery at this point. We haven't done it yet. And if you want to check it out, here's a placement test to let you know where you should start. I didn't actually have her do the placement test, but I'm usually pretty good at guessing where my children are. Um, I think that this will work just fine for her. 
So we're really excited about using this in the upcoming school year for her. I think it'll be a great fit. I will let you know as we go through it how it's working out for us if you continue with us next year. Now, finally, for my upcoming eighth grader, she has struggled with math in the past, and so we are working on some different levels with her. She started off with teaching textbooks, and it totally did not work for her. So we switched over to the Good and the Beautiful Math in Math 4, and that has been working well. Um, we tried it out because it was free online, so you can print off the PDF online for the Good and Beautiful Math to see if it works for you. It doesn't work for everyone. It has a lot of color, it has different questions, and just a lot of variety, different word problems and things like that. So it can be really fun for the student who likes to have variety. It's not great for the student who maybe struggles with math and doesn't have someone who can kind of follow along and help them figure out what the problem is asking for, or for students who just want to do the math, very plain and simple, black and white sort of math problems. It does not work great for those sorts of kids. So it does work really well for her. She does actually enjoy this math, even though math is a struggle. So we are going to be starting next year. We have the Good and the Beautiful Math 6. It comes in two books, just so I guess it wouldn't get too thick. So there are a lot of questions in there. So here is sort of an example of what a lesson looks like. We have this here. So it will have a lesson with a QR code that will lead her to a video lesson talking about the new concept. Then they have, looks like they have a mental math checkup here. And then they have some, they have the mini lesson here. So that will teach your child if they don't want to go on the video to watch the video, or if the parent wants to teach the child on their own, they can use that mini lesson section. And then they will have practice questions. So there are quite a few practice questions every day. And so that is sort of something that people don't love as well. We go slower with this. We don't finish four or five lessons a week. We do more like three lessons. When we were moving quickly, it was four lessons a week. However, we would save that fifth day of math for all the reviews or part of the reviews. And I did slow down recently because I felt like she really did need to spend more time on those reviews and on those lessons. So I slowed down to three lessons a day. So there is a lot packed into this, but if your child needs a lot of practice and just going over the concepts over and over. This has been a great math curriculum for that. I have seen her learn so many new things and she gets to practice it often and her skills have grown in math. So this has worked out really well for her. I also got the answer key. You can also get this online for free. However, I find that the answers are really hard to see on the online version because maybe my printer doesn't print the red very well. So I definitely picked that up. And then the other thing I picked up for her is this mental math. This is the mental math five. We are working on mental math four while she's completing the good and beautiful math five because she wasn't ready for that mental math the year before. So we just started the math four and as we're working through that, and then once we're finished that, we will start on this mental math five. Now it looks like in this, in this math six, they incorporate the mental math into the lesson. So I'm not sure what we will do about that. There's a tiny bit of mental math here in her lessons. We'll probably just do it while we're at it. So that is what we're doing for her for her eighth grade year. Now, I really feel like she is learning a lot in the good and beautiful math. They have not yet come out with math seven and then they will have math eight. I'm not sure if by the time we finish perhaps math seven, we might be able to skip um, or we can maybe, once we complete math six, maybe we can do a foundations um, a foundations class to get her ready for pre-algebra. I'm not sure on what we're going to do in the upcoming school years. I am definitely considering how we might be able to maybe move her on a little bit faster or maybe not. Maybe we won't be ready for that. So I guess we'll see how things go. But those are our math choices for the upcoming school year. What are your kids doing for math next year? I would love to hear all the different things that people are doing. Thanks for checking this video out and don't forget to come back next week for our language arts picks. Thanks everybody. Bye.